Okay guys, welcome to the RPG Maker XP Basics tutorial. Basically, today, or in this little session here, we're, we're gonna basically cover the basics of RPG Maker XP. Um, I don't want to have to spend too much time on anything really, because most of this is self-explanatory, and I mean, if you have any trouble, we can look at a README or other tutorials out there. Anyway, okay, so basically, to make a new project, if there's no project open, you go to this little piece of paper here, a new project, or you can just click it, a folder, name, game, location, blah, 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 name it, whatever you want. For this case, we'll name the game test. <clears throat> All right, now we have a nice little 20 by 20 grassy field here. And first, what we're going to do is cover these layers. Or actually, I guess we should go to the map. Okay. This down here, you can right click it new map, it will ask for some stuff, new map, you know, you could just make maps, name them, whatever, you can also edit them, if you want to edit a map, right click it, map properties, name it, tile set, a tile set is what you used to make your map, like if you wanted to make a desert, you change the width height, you can start it with music, any music you have uploaded, any background sounds, medias that you've uploaded. You can give it a step average, etc, etc. Alright, so today we're going to make a desert. So we're going to pick the desert tile set, of course. Okay. Oh, look at that. Nice little deserty desert. <clears throat> so that'll bring us to our next thing that we're going to talk about, which is layers. So there's four layers total. So the very first one is foreground. Anything that your character is going to walk on, you know, it's just ground, simple as that. It's instead of click a ground tile, anything you want to fill with, you can draw it all in, or my preferred method. You go to the fill bucket, and you've completely made a desert. Congratulations. All right, and the uh, second layer is for anything on top of the ground. So say hey, we want to make a cat. Okay, not like that. We want to make a cactus. All right, so congratulations, we made some cactus. All right, and that's the second layer. The third layer is for anything on top of... So, like, if you want to add more on top of that... <clears throat> so here's a better example. Let's undo all this. Control Z is to undo stuff quickly. So we have a palm tree, and so instead of just having a bunch of separate palm trees, we can't put them on top of stuff because it makes them disappear. So we're going to undo that, and we're going to go to the third layer, make more trees, so that you can see it's a nice overshadow, and it gives your map detail and texture and stuff like that. So that's all. That's the first few layers. <clears throat> it's terrain and stuff like that. The fourth layer is the event layer. This is basically the heart and soul of your entire game. Right, so we're going to right click. I click new event. And now we have a nice little window open here. You can name your event. But that's basically for reference. Like if we're going to forever going to refer back to this event. So let's name it. Right, we'll cover switches, variables, self-switches, basically all the conditions we'll cover. The first thing I want to talk about is this whole area and the event commands we see. Right. The first graphic, if, you, if your event, which can be an NPC, a treasure chest, anything, the graphic, it'll have a graphic. Alright, so let's say we're going to make a fighter, and you can pick which ways the graphic will be facing. So apply, okay. We're going to right click player starting position to restart the entire game. Save, yes. Alright. This is our little event that we made right here. It doesn't do anything because we haven't set it to do anything. Well, we can't have that right. Come on. <coughs> I'm going to right click the event, make a little guy, and I'm going to make him say something. Double click here, 
double click this area or right click and insert and you see a bunch of commands and I mean this is literally the heart and soul of your game all right <clears throat> so let's make him say something so you're gonna go to show text click it let's make him say hey there okay and down here you can see that this is the trigger and that means the trigger to make this event start okay and in the action button which in this case is enter so this means when the hero or your person or whoever you're controlling walks up to this event and presses the action button the text hey there will come up simple right sorry i keep having to check the time all right we're about halfway done with this anyways these options down here you're not really gonna need these so we'll cover those in a later video or um, if you have any questions I can answer in the comments anyway these triggers action button player touch that's one if you bump into like if you bump into something um, it'll trigger the event or the event will activate but we want to intentionally talk to them so they talk to us um, so you know rather than bumping into them making it automatic um, we, we don't really have to worry about this. Um, the one that I use the most is parallel process, which means like, it's good for when, if you have a bunch of events going on at once, you don't want just one going on. It's good for things like cutscenes or multiple actions. It's, uh, this is just the one that I tend to use. So let's play test this safe changes. New game, sculpt room, and enter. All right, so there he goes. He said, hey there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that worked pretty well. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll cover more than just this. Um, we'll go through all these events, what each thing does. Um, this is really just meant for the very basics, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.